Hello, I'm Dr. Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory, and we need to talk about some very interesting brain imaging findings from my lab. I've been digging into some new data, and I thought I'd give you a quick update. Now, at this stage, there aren't pretty pictures, but I can give you the general story so far. First, my apologies for being absent for so long. Um, research funding has become more complicated, at least in the United States. So ensuring that I have everything I need to keep things running takes more time than usual, including the time on weekends I would typically use for videos. I hope to not miss multiple weeks in a row again, especially because there's so much to talk about. But if it does happen again, just know it means I'm working extra hard to figuring out these diseases. Um, but today, let me tell you about lactate in the myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome, or MECFS, brain. And I want to talk about why that's a strong sign of brain inflammation in MECFS. Now, a caveat, I am discussing new analyses with you, and I'm actively working on these data sets, and the results have not been peer-reviewed, and they've not been published yet, which means this is a work in progress, and the results can change. Uh, now, this is a magnetic resonance spectroscopy, or MRS, study, and it uses an MRI brain scanner. It allows us to measure the concentrations of certain chemicals in the brain, and I'm using the scans to determine why people with MECFS feel so horrible and why they have such little energy to do the things that they want to do. And one of the chemicals of interest is lactate. Now, when we see elevated lactate in the brain, this is a sign that something is really wrong in the brain. A detectable lactate levels usually means there are metabolic processes in the brain that exceed normal cognitive processing. Your brain is doing, for some reason, it's doing more than it should. And I'm not talking about just thinking really hard. Something abnormal is happening. And that is most likely neuroinflammation. Now, a few years ago, we published a study showing elevated lactate in the MECFS brain, and you can find a link to that paper in the description for this video. Now, I concluded in the results that they tentatively show MECFS involves brain inflammation. Um, the issue with that study is that it was only 15 MECFS patients and 15 healthy controls and so we couldn't be absolutely sure the results were legitimate. Even though it looked really interesting, you can never know just running 15 and 15 people. It's crucial to run the study again with a larger sample to see if the results are reproducible or replicable. And this is a key element to really good science. If we run the study again and we find the exact same thing, we can be very highly confident that our results reflect the truth. So the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, gave us the funding to see if the results replicate. And we finished collecting the data for that study. And now with many more participants, like four times larger than the earlier study, do we see the same thing? And the short answer is yes. We see again that lactate is elevated in the MECFS brain. And perhaps even more important, the region's with elevated lactate are the same as the ones we saw in the first smaller study. So the regions are uh, reproducible. We see elevated lactate in the same areas of the brain. Now I'm going to go into specific brain regions and their importance probably in another video after I look at the data a little more closely. But the basic story is that lactate is elevated in a few key areas. Uh, let me show you um, using this kind of atlas for you so you can see where this is at in the brain. Here's a side view of the brain looking to the left. So first of all, we see elevated lactate in the parietal lobe, and particularly an area called the postcentral gyrus. And this region is part of the surface of the brain, and it processes almost all bodily sensations. Um, so that's one area. Now, deeper in the brain is the mid-cingulate, and this region processes experienced effort, which is how hard it is to do things. And it also processes the kind of suffering and emotional aspects 
of pain and fatigue. And so this area has elevated lactate. Now, if we switch to a top-down view of the brain, we see elevated lactate in the insula, and this is an area that integrates emotions and sensations to give meaning to your experiences. And then we see elevated lactate in the putamen, where abnormal mental fatigue and exaggerated cognitive effort are processed. And so all these regions are processing things that are very relevant to MECFS. All these regions showed activated lactate. They're all associated with abnormal fatigue and difficulty doing things, and they are key targets for inflammation causing drastically reduced activity. And so these results support the hypothesis that MECFS involves brain inflammation. So a couple of observations just at my first look at these data. First, the pattern I'm seeing is very similar to what I see in fibromyalgia. I suppose that shouldn't be surprising because about 50% of people with MECFS also meet criteria for fibromyalgia, which means we certainly have people with fibromyalgia in this data set. And the main takeaway with that is if we find a treatment that works in fibromyalgia, it's probably worth trying it in MECFS as well, especially if that treatment targets brain inflammation. Uh, the second observation, this is really important, I see that not all MECFS participants show elevated lactate in the brain. Um, it seems that more than uh, around 30% of the MECFS participants show clearly abnormal elevated lactate. So it's not all of MECFS or 100%. It's really, we're talking about a subgroup. And this fits really well with what I also see in my blood analyses research, which is there seems to be at least three distinct types of MECFS or three distinct causes of MECFS. One is brain inflammation, and that's about 30% of cases. Uh, one is systemic immune dysfunction, which is separate from brain inflammation, and that's another 30% of cases. And then the remaining 40% is something else. And that's mainly a mix of oxygen availability issues that are caused by autonomic problems or a more fundamental problem with mitochondria and metabolic processes, basically uh, problems with energy usage in the brain. And it's important to understand these subgroups because it is very likely that those groups are going to require different treatments. There's not going to be an overall MECFS treatment. So uh, I've got to do a lot more work with, with this data before I release my official conclusions. I have to test alternative hypotheses. Can I come up with other reasons, uh, other explanations for what I'm seeing aside from neuroinflammation? Um, can I find clues as to why the lactate is higher? And that's really important because if we know why the lactate is higher, that will help me identify the best uh, treatment approaches. So the, so the main takeaway for you right now is that novel anti-inflammatories that can reach the brain should be prioritized for development and testing and should be a main focus of clinical trials, but we'll get to all that in other videos. And that's really all for today. Just a really quick uh, update to get back on track to these weekly updates. Thanks for listening uh, to the lab updates, and I will be back very soon.